today the CPI is higher. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, where they just post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The Consumer Price Index, the CPI, rose 0.8% in the September 21 quarter, according to the latest data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. They said the most significant price rises in the September quarter were new dwellings up 3.3% and automotive fuel up 7.1%. Construction input costs, such as timber, increased due to supply disruptions and shortages. Combined with high levels of building activity, that saw price increases passed through to consumers, they said. Rising fuel prices also contributed to the September CPI, with the CPI's automotive fuel series reaching the highest level in half a century of its history. Rents were also higher, up 0.2% overall, with rises in most cities partially offset by falls in Sydney and Melbourne. A two-speed rental economy remained evident in the September quarter. Low vacancy rates drove prices higher in Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, Hobart, Darwin and Canberra, while high vacancy rates, particularly for inner city properties, saw rental prices fall in Sydney and Melbourne on both a quarterly and annual basis. Global supply chain disruptions resulted in price rises for some items, including furniture up 3.8%, motor vehicles up 1.4%, and audiovisual equipment up 1.8%. The most significant price falls were fruit down 8.3% due to favourable growing conditions for berries, avocados, and citrus fruits and reduced demand from the food services industry, reflecting lockdowns in Sydney and Melbourne. Clothing prices fell 5.5% as retailers looked to move excess winter stock as sales fell due to lockdowns, as reflected in the retail trade data. Annually, the CPI rose 3%. A key contributor to this increase was fuel prices, which have risen 36% from the lows seen in mid-2020. Underlying inflation measures reduced the impact of irregular or temporary price changes on the CPI, such as significant fuel price increases this quarter or the impact of free childcare in 2020. These measures recorded their strongest annual increase since 2015, trimmed mean inflation, increased to 2.1%, up from 1.6% in the June quarter. And so even on the official statistics, we are seeing inflation rising. And the trimmed data, which is the one that the RBA is going to be focusing on, is significant as it's now above the 2% lower bound of the RBA's 2 to 3% target. Now, the question, of course, is will it continue or will things ease back? Well, structurally speaking, it looks to me as though some of these costs will continue to rise. So I suspect that the inflation rate is more sticky than many think. And of course, the other point to make here is that the real CPI, the lived experience of CPI, is much, much higher for many households relative to the statistics that are produced by the ABS. So like it or not, inflation is here and it's going to haunt us for some time. This may put significant pressure on the Reserve Bank to consider lifting rates sooner rather than later. We'll see. But this information is no surprise, really. It's very much in line with what we expected to see. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.